Stay tuned. Coming up next is Caldwell Cafe on WXOV TV. Today's show, we're going to keep you up to date on the latest music and entertainment news and show you some of your favorite videos that I'm sure you will enjoy. So let's take a look into our first first video. <laughs> Joyous! Dang! Well, I do it right, you do it wrong. Dang! <laughs> Can y'all cut out one of the first? Great book became a series, a television series, that was absolutely gripping. Had people just, mm. and you're riding the big wave. Yeah. Our hero, our story, everything's going good. Then some other names come up. Margaret Walker, mm -hmm. Harold Corlander, mm -hmm. people saying, oh, you took part of my story. Mm -hmm. Oh, you took this from me. Mm -hmm. Did this really come from out of the blue at you? How did this come at you? Well, you know, Alex and his attorneys handled all of that. I mean, I saw the emotional impact that that had on Alex. Students and faculty from Hampton University gather next to Bemis Lawn to celebrate the groundbreaking ceremony for Team Tidewater Virginia's Canopy House. Project manager Carlton Copeland was the MC for the special milestone event, highlighting the beginning of the home construction for the team's solar decathlon entry. Special guest speaker Dr. Eric Shepard and Congressman Bobby Scott expressed how eager they are about the team entering into the next phase of the Canopy House project. And we've been working on this since November of 2011. So we're very happy to see the stakes in the ground. I'll be very excited to see the metal showing up and the temporary foundations and all. Uh, so this, this, is, this is exciting. From now on, everybody's going to walk around here and start to see the building coming on. Our team of Hampton and Old Dominion University students represent the Tidewater region of Virginia, a place teeming with history where sea and land meet. It was on Hampton's campus, under the shade of this tree, the Emancipation Oak, that the Emancipation Proclamation was read for the very first time to freed slaves. Our home, the Canopy House, pays homage to the Emancipation Oak. That video was a little rough. <laughs> what did you think about it, Kamaya? It was really slow paced. Uh, the storyline was really slow. So, but then again, it was back in the 90s. True, true. You can't expect a lot from technology. Exactly. You asked it for a lot for a 90s <laughs> video. I will Very say true. I do like the video because um, it took place in my neighborhood. Grew up in Los Angeles, so you know, rep the West one time. I, I do appreciate the locations. Mm -hmm. I do know everywhere that is, so that's pretty cool. That's really cool seeing your hometown, a video that was broadcasted nationally. True, true. But the dev funeral scene was kind of, you know, not what you want to see sad. when you when you watch right. a video. Okay, you know, no for Ice Cube for the next video. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get into what's now playing in the news. Would you turn down an Oscar hosting gig if you were offered to host for the second time? Well, comedian Seth MacFarlane hosted the 85th Oscar Awards ceremony this past Sunday. MacFarlane offended some of the viewers with his choice of jokes about domestic violence, women's bodies, and Jews in Hollywood. However, the Oscars still received their largest audience in the past three years with MacFarlane as the host. Even though he made a milestone for the awards show, a viewer asked McFarlane if he was willing to host it again. He responded by saying on Twitter, no way, a lot of fun though. A few months ago, Psy's Gundam Style took the world by storm by becoming the first YouTube video to reach one billion views. Recently, the Harlem Shake, the new viral sensation, has taken its place as the latest internet fad. The video's overnight success helped Bauer, the recording artist behind the song, reach the top of the week's Billboard Hot 100 list of the most popular songs. This makes Bauer the first formerly unknown artist to debut at the number one spot in the category. Chris Brown and Rihanna's rocky relationship has inspired a plot line for upcoming Law & Order SVU episode. Aptly named My Funny Valentine, 
A promising singer is attacked by her boyfriend who was a popular hip hop star. The show is not officially about the couples themselves, although it is similar to Brown's assault on Rihanna four years ago. The episode has aired earlier this week on NBC, but will be available to view on Hulu.com. And welcome to WHOV News, I'm Sean Francis. And I'm Nia Vaughn. Our top story tonight is an exclusive one-on-one -on -one interview with a man who says that he wants to be Virginia's next Attorney General. His name is Justin Fairfax, and if elected, he will become the first Democratic Attorney General in almost 25 years. Another first, should Fairfax win, he will be the first African American Attorney General ever in the state of Virginia. I had the pleasure of speaking with Fairfax for WHOV Radio News 88.1, and here's what he had to say. I grew up in, in, in the inner city uh, in a very difficult time. It's a very violent time, a lot of gangs, guns, and drugs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and in large part, that's why I ultimately became a federal prosecutor. I had made a promise as a very young child going through that uh, difficult circumstance that if I could provide other people with a much safer community and therefore more opportunity uh, and a brighter future, I would do that. So that's why I left my law firm, which I loved, become a federal prosecutor to whom much is given, much is required. Mm -hmm. And indeed, much is required for the job of Attorney General. Yes, there is, Sean, but he certainly isn't backing away from this challenge. And staying with the topic of politics, last week's State of the Union address, President Obama took time to speak on the nation's budget. The president touched on many important issues, including jobs, rebuilding the middle class, the fiscal policy, and economic growth. While he stated some savings have been accomplished, he also highlighted that there is much work ahead. And staying with the topic of federal government and the budget, some experts say if Congress doesn't step in, $85 billion may have to be cut from the federal government. And those cuts may force people out of work. Oh,